Hello and welcome to another Kipware M video presentation. In this video, uh, we get a lot of inquiries about uh, how would you program a fourth axis indexing head using Kipware M. And so we decided to make a video show you how easy it is to create uh, four axis programs uh, for indexing heads. Uh, we also have a full fourth axis option in Kipware M, but uh, this video is going to deal with uh, four axis indexing head. I can see that we have four parts. Uh, bolted to our table here. We have a little SketchUp drawing to kind of illustrate what we're, what we're doing here. And so we've got the G54 as our uh, work offset for the top part, uh, G55, G56 for the underneath part, and then G57 for the part on the opposite side. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, you can download a uh, dimensional print uh, for the drawing uh, for the part, uh, but this illustration shows you how it's, how it's mounted on the 4-axis table. And what we're going to do is we're going to rough and finish this pocket, which is at a 45 degrees. Uh, then we're going to spot, drill, and ream uh, these uh, four holes that are on a bolt circle. And uh, so that's how the part looks on the fourth axis indexing head. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to go into Kipware M. As I, as I mentioned, you can download a print uh, with dimensions of the part. And then we're going to uh, program the part. Okay, so here we are in Kipware M, and uh, we're going to get ready to program the part. And basically, all we have to do is program one part. And when we get into the main program option, I'll show you how easy it is to link that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use our EIA cycle here uh, to create an indexing program uh, that I can insert when I make the main program uh, for the part. Uh, we'll see how that kind of comes together when we do the main program uh, portion of the of the video. I'm going to call this cycle uh, zero degrees. And the EIA cycle is basically an opportunity for the user to create blocks of G-code uh, that will automatically be inserted where you select in the program. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the Z-axis is at a safe location, or 4 inches, let's say. Then I would in unclamp the table. Index the table to, in this case, 0 degrees then clamp the table, and then call out my work offset, G54. Uh, so what I've done is I've uh, made sure that the head is up, rotated to my uh, location, and then called out my uh, work offset. I'm just going to copy this so I don't have to keep pasting it each time, so I don't have to keep typing it each time. And I'm going to create the program. So now I have zero degrees as my uh, as one of the cycles in here. And of course, like any Kipware M program, you can bring it back, make any changes that you want. Uh, if you wanted to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make another one now. Uh, this one I'm going to call 90 degrees. I'm going to paste that block of code in there and I'm going to change this to 90 degrees and I'm going to change this to G55. And I'm going to hit Create Program. So now I've got 0 and 90. Uh, let's make this 180. Paste this back in here again. Uh, 180. Make this G56. One more time. 270 degrees. And make this G57. Okay, so we have all our uh, indexing uh, programs done. And of course, you can save these to disk now. So uh, if you have a part next time uh, that you wanted to do, uh, you can always go back in here and we can recall these uh, so you don't have to type them each time. So you know, ev eventually, you'll build up a little library of these uh, indexing programs, maybe 45 degrees, 30 degrees, uh, whatever it, it's going to take to make a part. And then you can just bring them back. You don't have to keep writing them each time, uh, as with any uh, Kipware M program. We're going to get into uh, programming the part right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to call out this uh, pocketing routine. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to do this pocket. So uh, I'm going to call this rough the center pocket. And we're going to call the center of the part as our 0, zero location. Uh, so the center of that po pocket would be 0, 0. Top surface coordinate would be 0. You know, 100 thousandths for a clearance plane. <coughs> Excuse me. The length of the pocket is 3 inches. Width of the pocket is 3 inches. Uh, the total depth is going to be uh, 1 inch. 
the value of the corner radius is from the print is a half an inch. I'm going to take this at 100 thousandths depth of cut. And we're going to ramp into the cut by 10 thousandths. Uh, we've got radius of the cutter. Uh, we're going to call the radius of the cutter 3 uh, eighths. We're going to use 20 thousandths of overlap. Finish allowance on the bottom, we're going to call out for a 10 thousandths and 10 thousandths on the walls. Uh, we're going to use an eighth of an inch whenever we need clearance for the tool to move around the part. And now some cutting parameters. I'm going to go into my Kipware CSF. Uh, it knows I want to do rough milling. Uh, the part is, uh, let's call it aluminum. Uh, we're going to use an end mill, carbide end mill. I'm going to calculate. And I'm going to paste those dimensions, uh, those cutting parameters, into my form. Uh, I'm going to rotate the part at 45 degrees because that's what is called for. So basically what I did is I programmed the part as if it was square and then I let the software rotate it by 45 degrees. I'm only going to do roughing uh, with this particular tool. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the program. And now you can see that that rough center pocket, if I plot that in my Kipware TP, I can see that we've got our pocket rotated at 45 degrees. So the roughing of the pocket is done. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to call it finish. So now I don't have to copy all the information that was in there. What I can do is you can open this up. I can say that I want a counterclockwise finish. I do want to finish the bottom. I'm going to pull up my uh, CSF again so I can get some cutting parameters. Uh, aluminum, again a carbide end mill. Uh, the software knows that we're finishing, so now I've got some finishing uh, feed rates and spindle speeds. Again, 45 degrees, and uh, everything else is the same. Uh, depth of cut, it doesn't matter because the software knows that we're going to be finishing, so it's going to uh, not use any of those dimensions in there. We're going to create the program. Oh, Z axis feed rate. Uh, we'll call the Z axis feed rate. It's going to be plunging. There's not going to be any material there. Uh, we're going to call this a 25 inches a minute. So now we finished the pocket, and now we're going to do some uh, drilling. So we've got a bolt circle, so I'm going to use the bolt circle menu. I'm going to put down a spot, spot the bolt circle. Oh, we're going to use a spot drilling cycle, so we are going to use G81. Uh, the center of the bolt circle is zero, zero. Angle of the first hole is zero. Uh, the radius of the bolt circle, according to the print, this is a six and a quarter diameter bolt circle, so that would be a three and an eighth. Number of holes on the bolt circle is four. The number of holes in 360 degrees would be four. Uh, this is in case you want to make only a partial uh, bolt circle, so uh, maybe you would have eight on a complete bolt circle, but I only want to do four. Uh, you know, we could do that too uh, using this bolt circle menu. Coordinate to start cutting. Well, let's say a, first a clearance plane, let's call that 100, and we want to start 50 thousandths from the top of the part. Uh, the coordinate of the total depth is going to be uh, minus 200 thousandths for the spot drill. Uh, no peck, no petch. Uh, we're going to do this as a, a quarter of an inch so I can get some speeds and feeds from C uh, CSF. Pull down my aluminum. Uh, I'm going to use a high speed drill, calculate it, put it in the form and create the program. So now I did the bolt circle and again I'm going to copy this and I'm going to put down a drill. I'm going to drill the bolt circle. Again I'm going to pull this up and now I'm going to change some things. So I'm going to use a, a peck drilling cycle. The radius of the bolt circle is the same. Coordinate to start cutting. Coordinate of the total depth. Uh, the part is two inches deep so I'm going to go uh, two and a quarter. Depth of each peck, let's say we're going to do a hundred thousandths each time. And the whole diameter is going to be uh, just a little bit shy of a half an inch. Uh, so I'm going to just guess and so I can get some uh, speeds and feeds. This basically all this is for. I'm going to assume I got the right tool in the, in the spindle. Uh, so we're going to do some drilling. Again, we're going to go with uh, aluminum. Uh, should have, I should have set this up as my master uh, before so I wouldn't have to be picking the material each time. We're going to calculate it 
and we're going to record it. And so we've got our uh, 17 inches a minute, 1969. Uh, we're going to create the program. And now that we've drilled the bolt circle, and now I'm going to copy this again, and I'm going to make it ream, ream the bolt circle. I'm going to open this one up. I'm going to keep all of this the same. Uh, the coordinate this time, I, what I want to do is I want to just do a straight drilling cycle through there. Uh, I don't want any peck. Uh, let's so let's see what we got. Uh, we're going to go back to our aluminum. Uh, what we want to do is we want to change this to reaming. Uh, we've got a high-speed reamer. And we want to calculate it. Okay, so we're going to create the program, and now we've got the ream. Uh, so we did all the operations for the part. We roughed, finished the center of the pocket. Uh, we spotted the bolt circle, drilled the bolt circle, and uh, reamed the bolt circle. So we did basically one part, and now we're going to sh I'm going to show you how we would do this in, on the four-axis machine. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to call it operation number one. Uh, first of all, we're going to call it tool number one. Uh, the work offset is being taken care of in our indexing program. Uh, the spindle RPM we don't need. Uh, that's already in the program. We're going to call this height offset number one. Uh, clearance plane. Now let's call the clearance plane about four inches above the part. So what we're going to do first off is we're going to make sure uh, that the part is at zero degrees. Then we're going to rough the center pocket. Then we're going to index to 90 degrees. And we're going to rough the center pocket again. Then we're going to go to 180 degrees and we're going to rough the center pocket again. Then we're going to go to 270 degrees and we're going to rough the center pocket again. So tool number one is going to be our roughing end mill and it's going to do all these things. Uh, we only needed to program it once since it's the same part on all four corners. So zero degrees, rough the pocket, then 90 degrees, rough the pocket, 180 degrees, rough the pocket, 270, and so on. So operation number one is going to do all of this. We're going to switch to operation number two spindle RPM we don't need, uh, 2. Uh, still we're going to use uh, 4 inches as our clearance plane. And if we remember, we were at 270 degrees on the last one. So I'm just going to confirm that that's there. Then I'm going to finish the pocket at 270 degrees. Then I'm going to come back around. Basically the same thing, 0 degrees, finish the pocket, 90 degrees, finish the pocket, 180 degrees, finish the pocket. So we've got it all done again. Now we finished uh, the pocket. So I'm going to go to tool number three, which is going to be our spark drill. And we ended up at 180 degrees the last time. So I'm going to confirm that I'm at 180 degrees. And I'm going to spot the bolt circle. Basically doing basically the same thing. 270, spot, 0, spot, 90, spot. Operation number four, height offset four. Uh, we've got four inches for our clearance plane. And we ended up at 90 degrees, is that right? Let me go back and look here. Whoop, wrong way. Three, we ended up at 90 degrees. So we're going to confirm 90 degrees, and we're going to drill. 180, drill. 270, drill. Zero degrees drill. So we got all four of those done. Now operation number five, tool number five, height offset five, four inches. Can't remember where we ended up. Zero degrees. Okay, so we're going to confirm zero degrees. Then we're going to ream. 90, ream, 180, ream, 270, ream. I'm going to give it a program number. Oh, one, two, three, four. I've got my Kipware uh, Fanuc post that I normally use for my Fanuc machine. But again, if you followed any of the other post videos, you can see how you can quickly change the post to whatever machine you'd like. 
and now I'm ready to create my G-code program. And here it is, everything linked together, uh, the program to do all four parts. Let's take a quick look at what's happening here. Uh, you can see that we've got our little uh, program that we created uh, to index to zero degrees. So we came up to four inches, uh, which we established also uh, during our uh, operation creation. Uh, so we went up to four inches, we unclamped the table, indexed to zero, G54, and then did the program uh, to rough the part rough the pocket, the center pocket. Uh, what we should be finding in here is uh, indexing of the part to, and here we go, we go uh, from 100 from the program to 4 inches, unclamp, 90 degrees, G55, and start the program again. So here's our a second part, roughing of the pocket. I'll look a little deeper, we should find uh, 180 degrees, 180 degrees, and uh, roughing the pocket there. And then finally, 270 degrees, uh, roughing the pocket there. And then we start to do the drilling. Again, we're confirming we're at 270 degrees. Oh, I'm sorry, finish cut. So we finish the pocket, 270, 0, 90, 180 degrees. So we finished the pocket, uh, then we did our drilling, uh, then we did our drilling of the bull circle, I'm sorry, spot drilling was first, and drilling, and then reaming of the bull circle. So we did a ho the whole program, everything done, uh, just basically had to program one part, and using the little indexing commands, very easy to link them together uh, to create a program uh, to do all four parts using the indexing head. So pretty much everything we did uh, worked out pretty well. Uh, we've done a part now, and the good part about this is we haven't wasted tool change times. So what we did was while the tool was in the spindle, uh, we went in and we did all the work on all four faces of the four axis table. Uh, we came back, we changed tools, we came back and we did the work again with the tool in the spindle, all four parts. You can see that was really easy to do with KIPWRM. Uh, what I can do now obviously is I can save this program. I'll put a name in here. We're going to save it, and now if I were to cancel the software, start it up again, uh, basically the software is fresh. If I came back in here and I called, I got everything back where it was. So let's say you go all to the floor, uh, you do a little uh, cut with the part, you, you want to take this roughing, and you know what I want to do is I want to just change my depth of cut from here to uh, 50 thousandths. I'm going to recreate the program. I'm going to come back to my main program module. Everything's in here. If I go to create my G-code again, now I have a new program. Now it's 50 thousandths depth of cut. So you can see it's a little bit longer uh, to do all that pocketing. Very easy to do. Very easy to program multiple uh, parts on a four-axis table using uh, KIPWRM. Thanks for your softer interest.